I'm so happy. We've got Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho! Uh oh, oh, oh! And Frosty and Rudolph and a nativity scene. Well, okay, people can put whatever they like on their own place. Okay. So a place not too far from me has a nativity scene put up on public property. And they've gotten a bit of trouble for it. You can't do that, guys. You just can't. And here's why. That's right, the Founding Fathers would have not liked this very much. In fact, it's kind of what they stood against. Not religion itself, government regulation of it. You see, one of the key foundations for the US of A was that we had freedom of religion. It's kind of like freedom of speech, where you basically have to say what you want. Only this time, you get to think what you want. See the connection there? Now what's the big deal? People are allowed to express those beliefs. Ah, people, but not the government. See. If this was just in someone's backyard, no harm done. But this is public property funded by taxpayers, and the government seems to be showing a preference for a particular religious view. Now here's the thing, the government can't have opinions on this stuff. It would be like a parent admittedly showing a preference for one of their children. You don't do that. The American Religious Identification Survey shows that 76% of the population is Christian, 3.9% of other religions, 15 of non-religious, and 52 either don't know or refuse to answer the survey. Alright, but we have a deeply embedded history in religion. Actually, we have a deeply embedded history in secularism. Thomas Jefferson said, Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legislative powers of government, which actions only, and not opinions, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declare that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. So why does it say in God we trust in our money? Well, that was added during the Cold War. I'm not condoning it, but when you're terrified and convinced that the world's going to be blown up, turning to a higher power is kind of predictable. Christianity neither is nor ever was a part of common law. Oh, it's not just him. Every new and successful example, therefore, of a perfect separation between ecclesiastical and civil matters is of importance. Religion and government will both exist in greater purity the less they are mixed together. In fact, most of the founding fathers felt that way. And if you're still not convinced, ask yourself this. Would you want your government using your tax money to pay for, say, a Muslim scene? What about a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Jewish or atheist or atheist or agnostic? Of course you wouldn't want those because they don't coincide with your beliefs. So don't ask people from other beliefs to support yours. But it's not just people from way back that thought on this line. Here's what the National Secular Society has to say on their site. The National Secular Society campaigns for the separation of religion and state and promotes secularism as the best means to create a society in which people of all religions or none can live together fairly and cohesively. And I'll say this one more time so it carries through. If you want to put that nativity scene on your own lawn, do it. Have your opinions, have your beliefs. Just don't expect the government to back you up and hold your hand on everything. Be independent and spread whatever message it is you want to spread with your own mouth, your own words, and your own persona. Oh, and happy holidays. Take the halls with bells of hope.